Hello, this is Pastor Jim Ponko with the Sunday Devotion for May 8th, 2022. Uh, let me read for you from Proverbs chapter 31, beginning in verse 28. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done, and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. Do you notice anything unusual about that word of Scripture that I just read? I mean, obviously, it's a very appropriate part of Scripture for Mother's Day weekend, but did you notice anything else? Well, here it is. In this section, we are told to praise women who fear the Lord. We're told to praise them three different times, and that's actually very unusual in the Bible. The word praise is used in the Bible over 300 times, but there are only a very few places where it is used to describe the praise of anyone but God. And most of the places where praise is used of anyone but God are right in those four verses that I just read to you. What is that saying? You know, when I was growing up, I was often told uh, that you weren't supposed to praise people too much because you'd just give them a big head. And after all, I was told, you know, when Christians do a good job at something, they're just doing their duty to God. Maybe some of you grew up without getting very much praise from your parents other than an occasional it's okay or maybe a, a head shake of approval. But here we are told not only should we say it's okay, we are told a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. That sounds like a command to me. Let's take a few minutes to look at why. Why Christian mothers are to be praised. First of all, a little bit of an explanation on those words that I read. They are the last few verses of a 22-verse section at the end of the book of Proverbs about what makes a mother special. There are 22 verses because one verse is for each of the letters of the Hebrew alphabet. And it describes this ideal mother. <laughs> I say ideal because I don't think that any mortal woman could measure up to the woman described here, much less any mortal man. I mean, she is described as running her own business, making her children's clothing after she has wo woven the cloth from yarn that she herself spun. She also invests in real estate. She tends a garden and a vineyard. She works late at night and is known in her community for her wisdom. What's interesting though, is with all of those things listed, all those things that she does, those aren't the things that the Proverbs say she should be praised for. It's not any of them, it's not her charm or her beauty, but it's that she's a woman who fears the Lord. Now, what the writer to the Proverbs is here, point, writer of the Proverbs is here pointing out, is that Christian women really receive a double blessing from God. Let me describe those first, those blessings. The first of them is a blessing that every Christian mother, or excuse me, every mother receives, whether they believe in Jesus or not. That's why Mother's Day is really a secular holiday because everyone knows, everybody understands that mothers have been given the blessing, the privilege to be molders of hearts and minds, shapers of identity and purpose, teachers of morality and propriety to children. Their efforts to raise their children at great sacrifice are essential to the stability of their children and to the nobility of our society. When a nation loses motherhood and, and moms who are devoted to raising their children, nations crumble. But you know, I notice that I think the burden of being a faithful mother today, whether it's a believer or not, that burden has become heavier. Why do I say that? 
because, well, young moms today have to listen to what their peers tell them about how to raise their children. They're told of the warnings of various, quote, experts about all the things that they can do wrong to disrupt their children's development so that if, if they don't do it the right way, their children could be ruined for the rest of their lives. They're often told that they need to be a friend to their children, and that they must give them to f the freedom to make all their own dis choices and, and that they are responsible for making sure that their children are always happy. That's not easy to do. <laughs> Parents need encouragement. They're struggling. They need praise. But there is a second blessing that the writer to, of the Proverbs is, is pointing to, for Christian mothers in particular. You see, Christian mothers fear the Lord. And that's why they're to be praised. What does it mean to fear the Lord? Well, it sort of reminds me of, of the advice grandpas used to give to teenagers who were first starting to date. They would say, find a good God-fearing woman like your grandma, right? But what is the fear of the Lord? It has been defined as a faith-born love and respect for God. One writer I read said that to fear the Lord means to want to be close to God, but at the same time not dare to turn your back on God because of the eternal consequences of turning away from the Lord and His grace. To fear the Lord means to cling to God's love because we understand without His love and His forgiveness we would be separated from Him forever. And you see, it is that fear of the Lord that is the second of the blessings that God gives to Christian mothers. God gives it to us. We, we don't find it on our own. We don't learn to fear the Lord on our own. In fact, our natural inclination is either to be so afraid of God that we run from Him, so angry with God that we fight with Him, so unconcerned about God that we ignore Him, or so dismissive of God that we don't think we need His help. It is only through the Holy Spirit that God can reach our hearts with the truth. The truth that we are too sinful to stand before God, but that God loves us too much to let that continue. So God came to us and lived with us and died for us and rose again so that we might be his own. And the mom who understands, the mom who has that fear of the Lord in her heart, not only is blessed with the privilege of molding her children for adulthood, she also is blessed with the opportunity to direct her children to their Savior and to the eternal life he brings. You know, there's an old saying that you can't take it with you. But there is actually one thing that we can take with us. And that is the children we bring to fear the Lord with the gospel. Moms, grandmas, aunts, remember that. Remember that you are double blessed to have God's spirit in your heart and to have children, God's precious children in your lives. Take advantage of those blessings. Pray for the children you love. Teach them about Jesus. Bring them to God's house. Set an example with your humble faith. But now, there's somebody else who needs to, to, to listen for a few minutes, and that's the children of those Christian mothers, the husbands and the neighbors and the friends of the mothers who fear the Lord. God wants us to praise God those women. God singles out women who fear the Lord to be praised. Why? Well, first of all, because they are God's instruments in the lives of his precious children. Remember what Jesus said, the kingdom of God belongs to children. Praise moms for their part in bringing those children into his kingdom. 
You know, it's very easy for us to be critical, especially if you're a grandparent, because chances are your kids are not raising their children the way you raised them. Yet, in the sacrifices they make, they teach them about Jesus. So praise them for that. They are doing God's work. When we praise them for doing God's work, we are really praising God. Second of all, we need to praise Christian mothers because they are so often undervalued. We forget what a constant daily challenge it is to raise children to fear the Lord. What good are you doing when you glare at a mother because her child is acting up during church? Instead, we ought to praise them for bringing those children to God's house in the first place. Parents need encouragement, and God says to praise those mothers who fear the Lord. Third of all, God reminds us that we praise Christian mothers because many women do noble things. <laughs> that phrase is a really interesting one because the word there that is translated noble in other places is translated valiant or courageous. It's actually a military term to talk about operating with strength and efficiency and strategy. And isn't that exactly what moms sometimes have to do? I mean, their life is a battle. Sometimes they have to battle with their kids. Often they have to battle with the evil influences of the world around their children. They have to battle against the dangers that are everywhere. They have to battle knowing that the world around them is constantly changing. And that's why God says to praise those women who fear the Lord. Because they are his own warriors fighting a daily battle for the, true, for the eternal welfare of his precious children. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, who created Adam and Eve for each other and gave them children, we praise you for blessing us and all people through our families. We thank you for protection, shelter, food, clothing, love, guidance, and education and especially the opportunity to share with one another the true and saving faith. Bless our families for Jesus' sake. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.